Jason Atkinson, a lifelong buddy of mine, took up spay casting a handful of years ago, and he started to get really good at it, and then he's going on this big trip to the Babine. So he called me and he said, can we work on his casting a little bit? So we took three days, four days, and I wrote a syllabus, and we started working on the little nuances of making a good cast and changing direction. And then he started to record these little clips so that he could review them later. So what you're about to see is a collection of those clips. They're not professional, uh, but they're, they're pretty good and I hope they help you. I'm a big student of learning styles and figuring out how somebody learns. So once I figured out how John learned, I was able to communicate directly to him. My philosophy is number one, learning styles, listening to the student. Number two, understanding exactly how to make it simple. Spay casting is simple. And so we were starting to work on how to make a solid two-handed cast very simply. And number three is don't use jargon. So hopefully some of these are great. And if you would like more, you can find me on the interweb. And I'd be happy to help your casting too. This is Jason Atkinson with the Atkinson Casting School. Most people in the Northwest learn their ABCs by watching Sesame Street. That was the pinnacle of our education. And watching the Sesame Street, we've learned A, B, C, D. So in spade casting, we've learned the same shapes because that's the only thing we can come up with. This is a direction change called the circle C. And the C is painted with my rod tip. C to C, just like to C. And so what I'm gonna do is that rod tip's gonna be up here and I'm going to make a C, and that's going to throw the line above me and put it into position. Two parts, above me and into position. So here it is, C. There's no violence. This is a pacifist thing. There's no killing it. We're not jerking the line up here. We don't need to do that. All we need to do is paint a little C like this. C to D. Oh! Okay, so there's two mistakes that people make on this. Two, it's two. The first mistake is that they don't complete the C. They only do a half. And so when you only do a half, it looks like this. They come up here and they go, whoa. And then they go to a D. Obviously, if you go to the D there, you've got no tension on the on the uh, on the water, no 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 line contact. So the first mistake is, or the first solve is to finish the C all the way around. So if you look at my rod tip, where my rod tip is, I make the C and I finish below it at the same thing. Remember, in grammar school, you're graded by how good your shapes are on those pieces of paper. So you have a big circle C, a big capital C, a little C, a nice A. You've got to complete the letter. C. That's the, that's the first solve. The second solve is people do this and then they come straight back. You see how that lifts the water, lifts the line up? See all that? Now, when you lift the line out of the water, you're going to pull the fly out of the water and you're not going to have any, any load on the, on the rod always have to have the fly in the water to load the rod. Anytime it's out of the air, you're just waving a big stick at that point. So I come here, and the solve, instead of coming here, the solve is real simple. Low to D. C, and then low. See, now I'm pulling all that water, all that line is coming off the water. So if you ever look at the guys on making big fancy smancy casts on Instagram, they're having all this rooster tail kick up. And the reason is, it's contact on the water, which is loading the rod. C, low, D. Whoop. I'll show you one more time. 
the lower you can go to your D, you're ensuring contact. D, C, D. Okay, this is the difference between making a beautiful spay cast and chopping wood. Imagine that you have a flashlight on me and I'm a, I've got a white wall right here, so it's a shadow, my shadow. If I'm holding the rod like this, this rod's got a shadow against that wall. The plane to come down, and oftentimes when you're, when you're bombing a big cast, your elbows are coming up just a little bit. The problem here is when people tip it over on top. See, that doesn't even look right. So the plane on that shadow line is I come down this way. So it's down and then forward. It's down and then forward to my stop. If I start to stop the motion up here, or if I'm bringing it down like this, see where my rod is? My rod's forward. And forward is chopping wood. This is down the plane and then over. The difference right there is hanging on to that load longer and, and shaping the cast. You can do it by this. I'm obviously over exaggerating this shadow right here. See that line? Right here, shadow. Hmm. Hmm. That will hold the load. If I come here and I just chop wood, hmm. I give, all, I give all the power away at the top. See that? Moving here and the chop wood, I'm just open the loop up. Here, I'm on plane, I've, it's loaded, load, 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 and release it. This is how to put the loop in front of you, the D loop. The D loop typically is always behind you with the rod tip here and the line behind. You know, my old saying, line in front, line behind. This is, everything's in front. Sometimes you have to do it because you've got stuff behind you and you're in a little tight spot. So obviously it doesn't matter what the setup is. You get set up and I extend my arms up here. See this? And roll. The loop then was right in front of me. That buys me the space. In order to do that, I extend my hands. It's a little awkward but I don't really care as long as I'm in control of the line. And boom. That is the loop in front. This is a drill to just get you making circles with your tip. I'm gonna make a circle and go that way. And then when it lands, I'm just gonna pull it into a modified D loop and throw it back. Now notice, I'm not jerking the line way up there. I'm not jerking my rod tip up here. My rod tip's right here, and I'm just drawing a little circle. And I'm going back. Look at that, I got no grip. It don't work. The only thing I'm really moving is the rod tip. I can do it that way. I can do it this way. Your turn. Well, good morning. This is after three and a half days of casting. On the single cast, imagine this is a single rod. The power is in the stop. The job of the rod is to transfer energy to the line. No amount of waving around is gonna do that. You have to come back and stop. So, what I was saying is, the grip's gotta be light, number one. Number two, if your hands on the double hull are going in the same speed, everything's the same speed, <coughs> it won't work. This one goes slow, this one goes fast. It's your left hand that feels the rod, it's your left hand that increases the line speed. So, your back cast is more important than your forward cast. Your back cast, your loop's gotta be pretty, then your forward loop's gonna be pretty. 
if your back cast is ugly, no amount of power is gonna fix it going that way. So always have a nice back cast. Stop, load, hang on to the load, forward. And that forward, stop, firm stop, shoots it forward. So it's gotta be, your goal is to make the line level on both of them. Anytime you tip your rod, now it's a windshield wiper. Now you're throwing a big open loop. Stop, 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 stop. The power is in the stop. Stop, stop. When you stop the rod, then the fly rod's doing what it's supposed to do, which is transferring energy to the fly line. I'm Jason Atkinson. Stay here next week when Mr. T will be my guest celebrity. This direction change has got several names, but it's kind of a zigzag. The principle is moving the fly with the tip of the rod and putting the line on the 180 degree. So I just lift the rod and it's I like I make a Z like a Zora. Boom. Look at that. See it's right on the line. Boom. Once it's on the line. Once everything is lined up, the D-loop's easy. And remember, it is smooth to stop. Smooth to stop. If it's fast and then a soft stop, it collapses. It's a smooth to stop. And the stop means you're, the rod, you stop the rod, but the tip is still transferring energy to the line. Stop, and then when you stop, now, a friend of mine, when he was a little boy, his dad had a jet boat, and they were going up, up river, and they hit the sandbar, and they're, they're probably doing 40 miles an hour, and they hit the sandbar and stop, and the little boy was ejected forward about 20 feet. That's exactly what smooth the stop means. Stop, boom, transfer that child, I mean that fly line, forward. This is the touch and go, and the touch and go is a way to move the fly without a big stop. So it's different than a, a, a double spay or a single spay. It's a really efficient way to move the fly. So again, I'm dump, my right hand is downstream on this one, and so I'm going to keep all the fly off my right downhill. The trick to this one is starting with the the tip about, right about here, the, 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 the way to do this is roll the way you want to go. So I want to go over there, so I'm going to make a circle that way, touch, go. So I, I come around, my fly hits, and I don't stop the rod, I keep the rod moving right into the D-loop and push it out. It's a timing thing, if you go too fast, you're, you pull your anchor, you pull your fly off the water, also known as the anchor. If you go too slow, it all collapses. So it's a timing, and it's called the touch and go. Back here, make a circle, touch, go. And that touch is just enough with, with the movement of the rod to load it and then unload it. Uh, flying A, this is a direction change. It works best on your downhill hand. So right now, uh, my downhill hand is my good, is my strong hand, which is my right hand. It starts with the tip low, and I'm going to take it up and down, and it's going to make the line do a little pirouette. Not a circle, but kind of a pirouette. And so I'm going to go up, down, and then I'm going to reach forward, and that reach is going to put the fly line right here on the 180 degree rule. So, it's pretty simple. Up, boom. See that? Now everything is lined up on the 180. I'll show you again. Up, boom. And now I just do a D-loop. And it works perfect every time. Here we go with a cast yet to be named, Mr. Jason Evans. Here we go, restart. Oh, look at that.
Uh-huh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you couldn't really see it in the video, but yeah, that went pretty good. Okay, now give me a circle C right here. Nice little circle C, beautiful. Like that. Oh, can you believe you, you made that cast? <laughs>